Praise the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. What another beautiful and awesome day today to always be in the presence of the Lord. Another day right now to give him all the thanks right now, to give him all the praise right now, and to give him all the glory. We serve an awesome God. We serve a mighty God. We serve a powerful God. We serve an amazing God. We serve a God who is the same today, yesterday, and forevermore. We serve a God who still sits on the throne, hallelujah, who still performs miracles and wonders each and every day in the mighty name of Jesus. He is still in the healing business. He is still in the blessing business. God is good all the time and all the time. God is good. And he is so worthy. Yes, he is. He is so worthy to be praised. I don't know about you, my brother and sister, but I can't do it. I can't live without him. I depend on him. I rely on him because he is our healer. He is our deliverer. He is our protector. He is our shield. Jesus is our everything. He is our rock, our refuge. He is our helper. He is everything to us and more. He doesn't care what's going on with you right now. He just wants you to talk to him. He wants you to open up to him. He has spent a personal relationship with every last one of us. That's the only thing that he asks of us. Is that. That's it. Some of y'all only want a relationship with Jesus when it's convenient for you. When you want something or when you don't need anything. That's not cool. It's not cool. It's not fair at all. I know because I was just like that at one time. I was selfish of myself. But once I opened up my eyes and realized how good and how amazing and how faithful he was to me and how he got me out of the situation that I put my own self in, how he cleaned me up out of this, this wicked place that I was in, this dark place that I was in, I made it my business to have a personal relationship with Jesus. I made it my business to open up my heart to Jesus. I made it my business to pray and praise and fellowship with him every single day. It doesn't matter what I was going through. It doesn't matter what I was facing. God was my everything. He was my number one priority. It didn't matter what was going on. So basically what I'm saying, I want y'all to open up your heart to Jesus. Start seeking him more. And if you have not welcomed the Lord to your home, to your life, or even your prayer closet room. And if you don't have a personal relationship with Jesus, I want to encourage you right now today, please do so. He's waiting on you and he's available. God is good all the time and all the time God is good. And he is so worthy. He is so worthy to be praised. Let us pray. Heavenly Father God, we just come before you right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Give me all thanks, give me all praise, give me all glory. We just thank you, Heavenly Father God, for who you are, what you've done, and what you're about to do right now. We thank you, Father God, for your grace and your mercy. We thank you, Father God, for your love. We thank you, Father God, for the open doors. We thank you, Father God, for the door that you have closed to. We thank you, Father God, for the people that you have removed out of our life, God. We thank you, Father God, for the people that you have put in our life, God, who deserve to be in our life, God. Oh, Father God, we thank you for the love that you give. We thank you, Father God, for your patience, Father God, that you have with us, Father God. We thank you, Father God, for the rain that's about to come. We thank you, Father God, for this word that we're about to receive. We thank you, Heavenly Father God, for this powerful message today. That's going to keep us full today, keep us satisfied today. And there's no place, Father God, there's no place that I'd rather be at right now today, Jesus. But right here in your house, right here in your sanctuary, Father God, thanking you, praising you, and glorifying you, and magnifying your name, Father God, because you are our everything, Father God. We lift you up with thanksgiving and praise right now today, Jesus. We glorify, we magnify who you are right now today, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Father God. Let your will be done today, Father God. Let your words go out, and it should not return by board today, Father God. Father God, this is your time. This is your moment. And I know for a fact that you're about to show up and that you're about to show out in our life. I believe and I declare and I decree right now today, Father God, that someone's going to be healed today. Someone's going to be delivered today. Someone is ready to get their life fully to you right now today, Father God. Someone is tired of running, they're tired of hiding, they're tired of living in darkness, Father God. And they want to know what the light is all about, Father God. The angels already rejoicing in heaven about it right now. 
to him the Father God, you will, and you should get all the thanks and all the praise and all the glory, Father God. Father God, this is your house. The house that you built on solid ground. The house that you built on solid foundation. The house that cannot be moved, shaken, or fallen. Heavenly Father God, all the Father, you are welcome right now. You're invited right now today to enter to the house of the Lord. Right here in your sanctuary right now. Right here on your YouTube channel. Right here on your platform. Right here in my brother's homes. Right here in my brother's life. Right here in my sister's homes. Right here in my sister's life. Heavenly Father God, I'm asking you right now today to fill us up more with the Holy Spirit right now today, Jesus, because we want more of you and less of ourselves. I'm asking you, Father God, for a favor right now today for my brothers and sisters. I'm asking you, Father God, for healing right now. I'm asking you, Father God, to restore everything when the enemy tried to take and steal from us right now. I'm asking you, Father God, to do a new thing in my brother and sister's life. I'm asking you, Father God, to soften our heart right now. Speak to us right now today, Father God. Reveal yourself to us right now today, Father God. Father God, speak to us right now today, Father God, that we know it's you, God. Help us understand what we need to understand, Father God. Open our eyes, let us see what we need to see. Open our ears so we can hear what we need to hear from you. Surround us with your love right now today, Father God. Heavenly Father God, you know exactly what we are going through, what we are facing, Father God. And we are casting all our pain, all our troubles, all our problems onto you right now. Because your word tells us in 1 Peter 5, 7 that you, Father God, care for us more than anything. So, Father God, we are handing everything to you right now today on the simple platter, Father God. And, Father God, we know that you're going to take our problems for us. And we give you the day, praise and glory for it right now. Holy Spirit, you're working right now. You're invited right now today to enter to the house of the Lord. Right here in this sanctuary right now. Right here on this YouTube channel. Right here on this platform. Right here in my sister's home, right here in my sister's life. Right here in my brother's home, right here in my brother's, my brother's life. Holy Spirit, I'm asking you to intercede and intervene right now. Holy Spirit, I'm asking you to comfort us right now because you are a comforter. Holy Spirit, I'm asking you right now today to quiet our thoughts, quiet our mind right now so we hear your soft still voice right now. Holy Spirit, I'm asking you to move to this place right now so we can catch the Holy Ghost fight through this sermon, through this service right now. Heavenly Father God, please forgive us for our sin, known and unknown right now. Wash us through your blood right now. Clean us as white as snow right now. Heavenly Father God, I want to say thank you right now today for forgiveness for our sin. Thank you, Father God, for not remember our sins anymore. Thank you, Father God, for the clean slate. Thank you, Father God, for the understanding. Thank you, Father God, for coming through. Words cannot explain how thankful, how grateful, how honored, how blessed I am to pray and praise and have fellowship with all my brothers and all my sisters today, Father God. In your house today, Father God. Heavenly Father God, we're available for praise. We're available for service. We're available for the kingdom. But most of all, Jesus, that we're available for you. And Father God, we thank you that we praise you, that we glorify, we magnify your holy name right now today. Heavenly Father God, before I get started, it's something that's always in my mind about you. It's something that stays in my spirit about you. It's something that stays on the fruit of my tongue and the fruit of my lips about you. And I just got to tell you how I really feel about you, Jesus. I just can't thank you enough, 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 Jesus. I just can't thank you enough. That's why I praise you the way I do because I can't thank you enough. That's why I glorify you the way I do because I can't thank you enough. That's why I magnify and shout out your holy name the way I do, Jesus, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I put my heart into you every day, Jesus, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I glorify and I magnify your holy name the way I do, Jesus, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I'm always putting your first place in my life, Jesus, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I have a hunger for you. That's why I have a thirst for you, Jesus. That's why I want more and I want more and I want more of you, Jesus, because I can't can't thank you enough. I just 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 can't thank you enough. Glory, hallelujah. I just can't thank you enough, Jesus. And if you're ready for God's word, let the church say amen. Glory be to God. Some of y'all like hell today. You're playing a dangerous game. And you really thinking that nobody knows what you're doing. You really think that nobody sees you. You really think that you will not get caught. You are playing hide and seek, thinking that you can continue to hide and thinking that you will never get caught. But I got sad news for you today, my brothers. I got sad news for you today, my sisters. Eventually, you will get caught. 
you will get caught because somebody's watching you every single day. You might not know who it is, but his name is Jesus. And he is watching you. And at the appointed time, what you've been doing in the dark, what you've been hiding, is going to come to the light and everybody's going to see what you've been doing. A lot of y'all playing undercover right here today, my brother. You are married. That girlfriend, that fiance, but you got other women on the side too. You got a mistress, you got a girlfriend on the side, you got kids on the side. And you also messing with the same sex too. And you don't want nobody to know. You playing like you the undercover brother. But guess what? Sooner or later, everything that you're doing undercover will and shall come to light. You have not gotten away with it. You can continue to hide all day long you want. But eventually, everything that you're doing in the dark, it will, and it shall come to the light. So you might as well go and confess now. You might as well go ahead and come out and say, you found me now. You might as well come out and say, I, I got caught red-handed. Because eventually, you're going to get caught. You're going to get caught. There's people in the church that doing the same thing. You got preachers out there. Supposed to be preaching the word of God. Got a wife. Got people in the congregation just looking up to him. But he got other women inside the congregation that he messing with too. But he don't want nobody to know, but it will be a scandal sooner than later. You're going to see what man that you was for. You're going to see that everybody was not called by God. Eventually, what he was doing in the dark is going to come to light because he's been hiding. He don't think he can get caught. He don't think nobody sees him. He don't think he don't think that, that nobody's aware of what he is doing. But somebody sees him and somebody is aware of what he's doing. My sisters, y'all in the same boat too. Don't think that y'all too holy like y'all are here playing to the good shoes like you ain't doing that in the dark. Because you were doing something in the dark too. Some of y'all got good men who love y'all to death. Y'all ask for this type of man. Y'all pray for him. And you're going back to the same scrub that you're breaking. You think that you think that you're gonna get a better result going back to that. You should have known what you got the last time. But you run it back and you run it back. But you smiling in your man's face, telling him that you love him. Telling him he's the only thing. Tell him that you're in love with him the whole time. You got a secret, but you ain't told nobody. But Jesus heard your secret. He's aware of your secret. He's aware of you hiding. Your husband might have not found you yet. Your boyfriend might not have found you yet. Your fiance might not have found you yet. But Jesus said, I know you yet. You can hide. But I'm going to find you. He said, I know you in. I know every step that you make. Some of y'all doing the opposite same sex too. You have fell in love with the same sex. Now you're confused right now because the enemy has got in your head right now. There's some so-called friends out there right now today. You're doing, doing a friend wrong. This friend right here had your back. This friend made sure that whatever you needed, whatever you wanted, he or she made sure that you had it. Even if there was they last, even if they didn't have it, they made a way for you to have it. And you were doing this friend wrong. All the way down to the core. And this friend really think that you really think to him and her. They really think that you really got their back. And the whole time, you just as fake and phony as you won't be. I'm just keeping it real with you. And when I say hide and seek, it was a game as we played as children. Every child has played this game. Every child has played this game. It'd be one person behind a tree or a building. They are counting from zero to three or zero to ten. And everybody go hide. And if that one person is trying to find where everybody's hiding at. And this person is going around looking and looking and looking. Can't find nobody nowhere. 
and he's on the, he's on the search trying to find you. She's on the search trying to find you. There's only one person know where you're hiding at. His name is Jesus. So as we was playing the game, it took some of us a long time to find our friends. But we had to seek, and we had to seek. And we had to seek for quite some time. And sometimes we were seeking, and sometimes what we were looking for, we right there in front of our face, but we couldn't see him. We couldn't see her because they was blending in in the dark. And we played this game. We always played it in the dark. We always played it at night, so it was kind of hard to see the person. And that is exactly what some of y'all are doing right now. You're doing your dirt in the dark, thinking nobody can see in the dark. But there's somebody who has night vision, and he don't need garbage at all. He don't need no infrared at all. He can see you. He can smell you. He can hear you breathing. He hear your heart beating. He can feel your pulse beating at the side of your neck. And his name is Jesus. So it doesn't matter what you're doing in the dark, my brothers and sisters. It doesn't matter how you hide in the dark, my brothers and sisters. You will eventually get caught. You can hide and seek. But what you are hiding, it ain't going to last forever. It's not going to happen. It's not going to last forever. So I'm telling you right now today, you might as well come on out of the bushes right now. You might as well come out of the dark right now. You might as well come out of the clubs right now and say, you got me, I'm caught red-handed. Don't wait until the light exposes you because when you get exposed, it's going to hurt worse than what you're hiding right now. Because first of all, you're going to be ashamed because everybody's going to look at you. They're going to laugh at you. They're going to put their head down and say, man, I can't believe you did this. They're going, you're going to feel so beloved. You're going to go hiding yourself. And you're going to want nobody to go find you. And at this time, ain't like you're doing no dirt because you're going to be so ashamed that you got caught for what you were doing. I've been there before. Years ago, before I got in the Word. I know I did wrong. But when I got caught, it hurt worse by getting caught than hiding. Because when I got caught, I felt belittled. I felt ashamed. I felt more embarrassed because what I was doing in the dark, I should have just came out and just told my girlfriend at the time, this is what I was doing. I should have just told her I wasn't, I should have just told her that I had another girlfriend on the side. I should have just told her I'm the wrong type of guy, but I was doing all my dirt in the dark. But I was young, didn't know no better, hard head. But when it came out, I was hurt worse than she was. I was hurt worse when I was doing in the dark. Because not everybody know my problem. Everybody know my secret now. There was no need for me to get on the phone and try to convince everybody to say, oh no, they want me because everybody had saw it. They witnessed it. So I can't even get on the phone and have nobody to be on my side at all because they know now. And when everybody know what you were doing in the dark, that's going to hurt you worse than every, anything, my brothers and sisters. So I'm just telling you right now, you know exactly who you are. What you're doing in the dark is going to come to the light. You can hide all day long, but you're going to get sick. Somebody going to find you, and somebody know where you're at right now. Somebody know what you're doing right now this very moment. So don't think for one second that nobody don't see what you're doing, even though that you're doing in the dark. Somebody's seeing you. And sometimes be the least person that you least expect who is watching you. And you will get busted. And you will get caught. And you will get red-handed. I promise you, you will. So right now, I ain't trying to put no fear in nobody. I ain't trying to scare you. I'm just trying to save you right now because you're hiding right now. So you might as well come behind the building. You might as well come behind that rock. You might as well come behind that bush where you've been hiding there for quite some time. And just come out and say, I'm caught ran handed. Let's get it on out. Let me get it on over with. Because if you wait and you get caught, it's going to hurt you worse than while you was hiding. I promise you it will. Let's turn our Bible to Luke 12. And we're going to read verses 2 and 3. Luke chapter 12. And we're going to read verses 2 and 3. If you have it, shout out glory, hallelujah. I have it. There's nothing concealed 
They will not be disclosed or hidden. They will not be made known. What you have said in dark will be heard in the daylight. And what you have whispered in the ear in the inner rooms will be proclaimed from the roof. So it doesn't matter even if you whisper something in the dark about somebody. Are you talking about somebody in the dark about somebody? Guess what? They're going to hear about it too. You're going to play hide and seek all day long. But you're going to get caught. And everybody's not good at playing hide and seek. Some people get caught all the time. And I just remember some of my friends said, well, how do I get caught? It's because what you were doing in the dark early, you was already getting caught. So what they was doing then, they was getting caught when they got older too. Because why? They was never get hiding. They were sloppy and hiding. And, and a lot of times, my brothers, we get sloppy and not hiding, not don't we? We get really, really sloppy in our hiding. A woman can be sneaky, but eventually she'll get caught too. That preacher, he can preach a good word all day long, but eventually he gonna get caught too. Those so-called friends, they can pretend like they're your friends, but eventually they get caught too. Family members can say they're your families all day long, but eventually they get caught too. In-laws can say they're your in-laws, eventually they get caught too. Your husbands will get caught. Your wives will get caught. Your boyfriends will get caught. Your girlfriends will get caught. Their fiancés will get caught. Your children, what they're doing behind y'all back, parents, they will get caught. They will get caught. I don't know who I'm speaking to today. I don't know who this word is for today. But if you know that, if you know that you're doing wrong, you got a secret. Whatever this secret may be, I'm encouraging you right now today. Please come back. Please come to the forefront right now. And just be honest. Do not wait till that light expose you. Because when that light expose you, it's going to hurt worse than by you hiding that lie and that secret in the dark. I promise you it will. And if you like what you heard today, you know this worst for today. Go and hit Jesus' like button. Hit the subscribe button too as well. Can you please pray with me? Lord Jesus, I ask of you to come into our life, to guide us, direct us, use us. I believe right now today in the mighty name of Jesus, by us praying this simple little prayer that God is already working everything God in our life right now today. And if you ever want to get in contact with me, leave me a comment. My YouTube channel is withers.lt. Always keep Jesus first place. Always seek him. Always honor him. Always praise him. Always keep your eyes focused on Jesus because he is the author and perfecter of your faith. Continue to trust him even though you don't see things happen. Continue to hold on to his unchangeable hands and please do not let it go. Continue to pick up your crosses and follow Jesus. Choose faith over fear. Always continue to pray for your fellow brothers and sisters. It doesn't matter if you know them. It doesn't matter if you ever seen their face. Prayer help and prayer changes things. I'm always going to continue to keep y'all in prayer, my brothers and sisters. The only thing that I ask y'all guys to do for me is continue to keep me in prayer and keep me lifted up to you. I'm serving me to sell to you. I love y'all. Stay blessed. In Jesus' glory, holy mighty name. Amen.